All right, going to call the last meeting of the day to order. Uh, this is a joint meeting of the Summer Flounder Scup and Black Sea Bass Management Board, along with the Mid-Atlantic Fishery Management Council. My name is Nicola Meserve uh, for the commission, um, and I'm joined up front by Wes Townsend, the council chairman, uh, with staff helping us today with our agenda items include Chelsea Tui and Kylie Dancy um, from the commission and council respectively. Um, looking to our agenda, are there any changes that need to be made to the agenda today? Not seeing any hands. Um, for the board only, uh, we're looking to approve the proceedings from, uh, we'll consider the agenda approved um, without modification. Moving on to the um, proceedings from the board's meeting in February of 2024, are there any board members that need to make uh, corrections or modifications to those proceedings? Seeing none, we'll consider those proceedings uh, approved um, and move on to public comment. This is an opportunity for um, items not on the agenda to receive public comment. Are there any members of the public, either in the room or online, that would like to make a public comment? Now is your opportunity. Seeing none, we will move on to the main event, which is to consider the Summer Flounder Commercial Mesh Size Exemptions Addendum and Framework, um, Addendum 35 for the Commission, uh, for final approval. Um, we're going to begin with a presentation from Kylie on the options and then move to Chelsea, I believe, for the public comment summary. Um, so uh, whenever you're ready, Kylie. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Okay, so um, we have in this presentation, Chelsea and I are gonna be sharing, we're gonna cover an overview of the action purpose and timeline, a review of the options under consideration. Um, Chelsea's gonna cover the public comment summary and the advisory panel report, and then I'll uh, cover the recommendations for final action from council staff, and then there'll be time for the council board to consider final action on this uh, summer flounder mesh exemptions framework and addendum. Um, in the interest of time, the, the presentation is overall pretty brief, but I do have some backup slides with some of the supporting analysis and stuff that the group has reviewed previously, if anyone um, wants to see that or has questions later on. So the most of you are very familiar with this action by now. It considers uh, two uh, changes to two exemptions to the summer flounder minimum mesh size requirements, um, including changes to the small mesh exemption program boundaries, as well as changes to the annual evaluation criteria for that program. It also considers changes to the flynet exemption, which exempts a specifically defined gear type from the summer flounder minimum mesh size regulations, and this action considers changes to that definition. This action has been ongoing for a little under a year after the council initiated a framework last December and the board initiated a corresponding addendum in February. The FMAT and PDT spent uh, most of this year developing a draft addendum and draft options for public comment, which the council and board reviewed and approved in August. The commission hosted a public comment period from late August through late September of this year and held two webinar meetings for public comment during that time as well. We also held an advisory panel webinar on October 3rd and final action is being considered today. On the council side, the finalization of the framework action and the corresponding rulemaking process will occur this fall and into next spring or summer and that would bring the effective date uh, sometime likely mid next year or, or early next fall. So I have a few slides covering the statement of the problem for each of the three issues being considered in this action. The first is the small mesh exemption program boundary. So this exemption was adopted and last modified in 1993. So it's been quite a while without modification to that exemption program. The exemption is designed to allow authorized vessels to fish east of this designated line shown in this figure and retain more than 200 pounds of summer flounder during the November through April period. Um, that would normally trigger the, the minimum mesh size requirement retaining that 200 pounds. So this boundary issue was raised during an in-depth review of the minimum mesh regulations that we conducted last fall. During that process, we received feedback from the commercial fishing industry indicating that this has become an important program to maintain the economic viability of their businesses. Industry representatives also recommended moving the demarcation line slightly landward to increase flexibility and economic benefits in the areas that are key for targeting other species with small mesh, such as uh, squid and, and whiting. The problem statement for the evaluation criteria uh, is this, this program is reviewed annually using observer data and the exemption may be rescinded if observer data indicates that vessels fishing under the exemption are discarding more than 10% by weight on average of their entire catch of summer flounder per trip. 
This 10% threshold was based on data from the early 90s that was used to provide a benchmark for whether discards of summer flounder were increasing. So that was what was used for the annual monitoring um, since that time. Uh, however, that current 10% threshold has been flagged as potentially no longer appropriate to provide meaningful advice on whether discarding trends are problematic under this exemption. So a lot of things have changed in the regulatory environment for these fisheries since the early 90s. There are many factors influencing discards and we have a lot more data now to be able to more closely monitor and, and evaluate the, the use of this exemption. And this is important because unnecessarily rescinding the exemption may increase regulatory discards of legal size summer flounder. Finally, the problem statement for the fly net, def, uh, the fly net definition. The original intent of that exemption was to accommodate a specific fishery operating primarily in North Carolina. That fishery no longer really needs that exemption, no longer really using it. Over the course of the last few years, though, we have heard that other fly net or high rise gear types with similar configurations are using this exemption throughout the greater Atlantic region, but some of those don't comply with the very specific definition in the regulations, despite being uh, very similarly designed net types. So as part of that fall 2023 exemptions review, industry comments requested a modernized definition to include these gear types, which are not designed to catch flatfish and catch, seem to catch relatively few summer flounder. Now I'll go over the proposed uh, management program or the recaps of the uh, options under consideration. In section 3.1 for consideration of the small mesh exemption program boundary, option A is status quo, vessels fishing east of longitude 72 degrees 30 minutes from November through April can retain more than 200 pounds of summer flounder while fishing with mesh smaller than that required uh, summer flounder in a mesh size of five and a half inch diamond or six inch square. This alternative would retain that line as it currently is shown in this figure with the exempted area shown in pink. Option B would move the westward boundary of the line. This alternative is based on comments received from the fishing industry representatives during last fall's review of these exemptions. So starting south of Long Island, that would move the line west about five miles to 72 37 longitude and follow that south until it hits the northeast corner of the southern scup gear restricted area. I have a figure on the next slide. And then it uh, will follow the eastern bound border of that southern GRA to 37 degrees north, which would form the southern boundary of that expanded portion of the exempted area. So what it looks like here with the entire area is shown on the, on the figure on the left and a zoomed in view on the right. In this figure, the existing small mesh exemption area is shown in the solid light green area, and the additional small mesh exemption area is that hashed green, uh, hashed light green area. Over top of both of those is the, the transparent gray area shows the Frank R. Lautenberg deep sea coral protected area, and in that coral area, all bottom tending gear is prohibited. So because of that overlap with the coral area that prohibits bottom tending gear, the effective change for the small mesh exemption area expansion in terms of fishery access is really that five mile expansion in the in the northern part and then the the sliver of, of water between the coral zone and the southern scuff gra so um, the options for the um, small mesh exemption program annual review trigger include option a represents the the current regulations stating that the regional administrator may terminate the exemption if observer data uh, indicates that vessels fishing under the exemption are discarding more than 10 percent by weight of their entire catch of summer flounder per trip and to rescind the exemption a federal register notice would be published terminating the exemption for the remainder of that season option b for the review trigger is keeping the language very similar but revising that trigger to 25 percent in cut in catch um, of catch and weight for summer flounder per trip on average. The FMAT PDT noted that this is a more realistic percent of expected discards in this program based on the revised and more accurate evaluation methodology that we've used in the development of this action and also considering modern drivers of regulatory discards. And it's also very similar to the percent of summer flounder discarded on non-LOA trips. Now, we've also seen that the average discards in weight on small mesh exemption trips were found to be pretty low, um, even where the percent of discards is high, since most trips using this exemption are not catching very much summer flounder, so it's fairly easy to hit that percentage um, threshold, even when the discards in weight are low. So this alternative would reflect sort of the status quo operations over the last 10 years of observed small mesh LOA trips and the broader trawl fleet and, and consider some of the, the modern drivers of discards that we are dealing with as well. 
Option C is similar, that it would create a, a, a tiered monitoring approach uh, similar to the last one, it would re revise that trigger to 25%, but rather than moving immediately to consideration of rescinding the exemption, it would trigger a more in-depth evaluation of discards and, and other um, behavior within the small mesh exemption program. This review would be reviewed or conducted by the monitoring or, or technical committees, and this type of review would allow for a more thorough consideration of what's driving discards as well as the variability and uncertainty in the discard estimates with the goal of more specifically defining the management problem and allowing a more careful consideration of the appropriate management response. Since we know that um, depending on the drivers of discards, rescinding the exemption could cause more issues. Um, with that option C, the review would be conducted as soon as possible, but no later than the next specifications review. Results would go to the council and board for their recommendations, and the regional administrator would retain the authority to rescind the exemption if warranted. And uh, this is where I, I'm gonna pass to, to Chelsea to cover um, the most of the rest of the presentation. Chelsea? Great, thanks, Kylie. Um, so wrapping up the option, section 3.3 considers revisions to the definition of a fly net. Option A represents the status quo definition where vessels fishing with a two seam otter trawl fly net are exempt from the summer flounder minimum mesh size requirements. And the regulatory definition of a fly net is a two seam otter trawl with the following configuration. The net has large mesh in the wings that measures eight to 64 inches. The first body section of the net has 35 or more meshes that are at least eight inches and the mesh decreases in size throughout the body of the net to two inches or smaller towards the terminus of the net. Next slide, please. Option B represents the modified fly net definition to remove the reference to two seams and the reference to the upper range of the mesh size in the wings of 64 inches. And this option also revises the description of the amount of large mesh required. That new definition reads, vessels fishing with an otter troll fly net are exempt from the summer flounder minimum mesh size requirements. The regulatory definition of a fly net is an otter trawl with the following configuration. The net has large mesh in the wings that measures eight inches or greater. The first body section of the net has at least 280 inches of mesh behind the sweep where the mesh size is at least eight inches and the mesh decreases in size throughout the body of the net towards the cod end. Next slide, please. So that wraps up the options under consideration. However, draft addendum 35 also makes note of two changes to the future monitoring of the fly net exemption and administrative requirements. These sections are not options under consideration, but steps that will be taken to evaluate the exemption and correct language in the re uh, regulations. So expanding the definition of a fly net will make monitoring of the exemption slightly more challenging because we have typically relied on North Carolina data for monitoring this exemption. So going forward, if the definition is modified, we would need to look beyond that North Carolina data and we would expect to use observer data for monitoring, but there are some concerns with the observer data, including that Net type terminology can vary up and down the coast, and the net type field is sometimes blank in the observer data or left as unknown. However, back in June, the board and council recommended adding a fly net and high rise gear code to the VTR form. And this is a step that GARPA will take with rulemaking, and this change will not require or should not require additional time to implement. And then moving on to the administrative issues, there is a slight difference in the way the regulations are worded versus the FMP amendment language, where the FMP states that the National Marine Fishery Service may withdraw the exemption if the annual average summer flounder catch in the fly net fishery exceeds 1% of the total fly net catch. While the regulations state that vessels discarding more than 1% of their entire catch of summer flounder per trip. And so the wording in the regulations is a very easy threshold to hit and the FMAP PDT and the boarding council had previously discussed that the FMP language was the original intent. And so Garfield plans to clarify the regulations to be consistent with that FMP language. And you can move into the next slide. Thank you. Um, so now I'm going to move into the summary of public comment and the advisory panel report. 
So the public comment period for draft addendum 35 ran from late August through late September. And during that time, there were two virtual public hearings. One was for the Northern states from Massachusetts through New Jersey, and one was for the Southern states from Maryland through North Carolina. Uh, the hearing in the Southern states concluded early due to only staff, commissioners and proxies and council members in attendance. And then for that Northern state hearing, there were five attendees, um, and two comments were provided. And then the commission also received four written comments, all from organizations on draft addendum 35. So moving into the summary of those comments, for the small mesh exemption program area boundary options in section 3.1, the commission received two comments at a public hearing and three organization letters supporting option B, which is the expanded small mesh exemption program area. Comments in support of option B noted that increased flexibility through this expansion would result in ec economic benefits to industry, including saving on fuel costs, and the expanded area is an important winter fishing ground. For the small mesh exemption program evaluation criteria in section 3.2, the commission received one organization letter in support of option A, which is the status quo approach. And then two comments at a public hearing and two organization letters supported option B, which is the modified discard trigger. And then one organization letter supported option C, which is not, oh yes, yeah, sorry, excuse me. One organization letter supported option C, which is that tiered discard monitoring approach. So comments in support of status quo noted the need to conserve the summer fonder population and thought that the modified discard trigger of 25% was too high. And then comments in support of both options B and C, so the modified discard trigger and the tiered monitoring approach noted that the 25% trigger is consistent with that revised discard evaluation method and the new trigger is not expected to increase discards as when we use the new method, that 25% represents status quo in recent years. And then for the last set of options for the fly net definition in section 3.3, the commission received one organization letter supporting option A, which is the status quo fly net definition. And then two comments at a public hearing and three letters supporting option B, which is the modified fly net definition. And I did wanna note that there was a mistake in the tables that went out to the council and policy board that stated that only one letter was in support of option B in section 3.3. Um, this has been corrected in the table on the screen to represent the three letters that we received that were in favor of this option. And so for the fly net definition, comments in support of status quo, um, again, noted the need to conserve the summer flounder stock, and then comments in support of the modified definition, noted that this new definition is reflective of modern gear, and this modern gear is more conservation oriented with mesh that often far exceeds the upper limit of 64 inches that is included in the current definition. So finally, moving into the advisory panel report, the commission and council advisory panels met jointly via webinar on October 3rd to discuss this action and the comments received. At this meeting, advisors asked questions about the main benefits to industry and the drivers of the action, and, um, how, you know, how this, action would benefit the average commercial fishermen and staff clarified that this action would provide efficiency gains to industry while you know based on the analysis not negatively impacting the stock um, so just kind of a lot of questions about why we the council and policy board were pursuing this these changes and then staff and commercial advisors summarized previously offered comments on the potential uh, benefits to industry as previously noted, for the small mesh exemption program boundary, vessels currently cannot fish west of the line while holding a letter of authorization. And the expansion would include most key areas where vessels are targeting smaller mesh species. So that way they don't have to return you know, to the dock and then go back out. It saves on fuel, it's more efficient. Um, even minor increases in flexibility and efficiency can incrementally increase economic benefits in a system that is highly regulated and the potential to reduce regulatory discards of summer flounder. And then finally, um, during the AP meeting, a board member offered insight into the lack of comments received on draft addendum 35 during the public comment period. 
uh, expressing that it was likely due to fishing opportunities. Specifically, this was a poor year for the squid fishery and folks needed to take advantage of squid availability during the comment period. And then additionally, many stakeholders felt that they have already provided comment on this issue when the council reviewed the mesh exemptions last year. And so that wraps up the public comment summary and advisory panel report and Kylie's gonna wrap up the presentation today um, covering the council staff recommendations. Thanks, Chelsea. So um, council staff provided a, a staff recommendation memo in the briefing materials and the supplemental materials. And I'll just go through these quickly for the small mesh exemption area boundaries. Staff recommend option B, the expanded uh, small mesh exemption area based on public comments indicating that this would provide industry with additional flexibility and potentially reduce regulatory discards. Again, discards and weight on these trips is pretty low on average and similar to discard levels on other trawl trips during this time frame. Um, staff note that small mesh effort occurs in this area and it's expected to continue to occur, occur in this area regardless of the exemption status because this encompasses some prime areas for other species that are targeted with small mesh. So the boundary exp expansion would not necessarily increase small mesh effort in this area. And assuming that's the case if effort stays relatively stable, we'd expect uh, discards of undersized summer flounder with small mesh would probably be similar to what's happening in that area currently. And then discards of legal sized summer flounder would potentially be reduced. Um, however, changes in fishing behavior are somewhat uncertain. So those aspects of the the exemption program should continue to be closely monitored using the improved methodologies that have been applied in the development of this action. For the evaluation methodology, the second set of options, staff recommend option C, tier, the tiered discard monitoring approach. As noted previously, this represents a more realistic percent of summer flounder expected to be discard, discarded based on the more accurate evaluation methods and more recent data and also reflects a little bit more of a realistic regulatory environment that we're in that's changed pretty substantially since the early 90s and that's had a big influence on discarding patterns. Um, option C also provides the opportunity to enhance our understanding of what's driving changes in discards, including different biological market or regulatory factors, and it allows greater consideration of the appropriate management response, uh, considering that rescinding the exemption in some cases could have unintended consequences of, of increasing regulatory discards, depending on what's driving those discards. Finally, for the flynet exem exemption, staff recommend option B, the revised flynet definition. Previous comments on this issue have revealed that the existing definition is outdated and is creating compliance and enforcement issues. Public comments and the observer data we looked at indicated that these net types are not catching very much summer flounder due to their, their design. They're not designed to catch flatfish. Um, so for these, these fly net and high rise net types, observer data indicate that the majority of trips don't catch more than the minimum um, poundage triggering the minimum mesh size requirements. So the majority of trips would not require an exemption, but about 30% of the observed trips we saw had summer flounder catch over 200 pounds, which is that minimum mesh trigger in the winter, and 46% had catch over 100 pounds, which is the minimum mesh trigger in the summer. And therefore, there appears to be some benefits to, to some vessels using these gear types that sometimes are encountering more than those poundage amounts on, on some trips. Um, as with the small mesh exemption, we recommended that this uh, exemption should be the status and, and use of this exemption should continue to be closely monitored for any issues and going forward that would include with both uh, observer data and VTR data hopefully in the future once that new gear code is added. And that is all I have for the staff recommendation. And we have um, actions needed here including uh, preferably a joint motion to select the preferred options and then the commission needs a motion to approve the addendum and the council needs a motion to submit the framework action to NIPS. So that's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Kylie and Chelsea, for your presentations. Um, before we jump to, to motions, are there any questions at this time, lingering questions for this document that's been before us a number of times? Um, Eric Reed. Thank you, Madam Chair. It, um, it's I do have a motion whenever you're ready. But before I do that, I just, uh, since the public hearings, the two public hearings, um, there were comments made then about uh, preferring option 2B over 2C. It's my understanding that since that time there's been a change now that 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 particular option is a little bit better understood. And I know there are people in this room that have made the comments and I'd like to hear from them whether or not that what I'm understanding is actually true before I make my motion. Thank you. Chef Kalen. 
Well, thank you, Madam Chair and uh, members of the council and uh, and the management board. Um, I represent Lunch Fisheries, Greg DiDomenico's in the audience also. Megan Lapp is on uh, the call. And back in September, when those letters were written and prior to the AP meeting, uh, we really didn't fully understand the difference between B and C. And I, I think we wrote B, but and after the, after the uh, AP meeting, it became clear that, in fact, C um, would be our preferred option for both Seafreeze and Lunds, um, even though it's contrary to the letters that you have in your packet. So uh, I, I won't uh, read from the memo about why we felt that uh, that C is a preferred option, but that is the case. So we kind of changed our position. I don't think we fully understood the options, the difference between the two options uh, a month or so ago. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff, for providing that clarification. Um, are there any further questions? Okay, seeing none to, to focus our uh, discussion, I would like to move to a motion and turn to Eric Reed. Thank you, Madam we'll Chair. We'll be making it for the board. I'm making it for the board, correct. So, so we get so I can read it from here. Hopefully I'll be able to see it. So okay, I think the language for the council is gonna be slightly different, but anyway, for the board, I move to adopt in section 3.1 option B, expanded small mesh exemption program exemption area in section 3.2 option C, tiered discard monitoring approach. And in section 3.3 option B, modified fly net definition. Thank you. Is there a second from the board? Jim Gilmore. The motion will also be the same for the council. Jim Gilmore, gonna make the motion. Joe Semino, second. All right, thank you. Uh, uh, council doesn't need to read it in since it's the same motion. Um, is there anything that you'd like to add, Eric, in addition to the you know the staff recommendation rationale? I would like to add my thanks to the staff over this process. They really did a great job, and uh, they probably deserve more thanks for putting up with me during the process. So I, I do appreciate it. All right, thank you, Eric. Uh, any uh, other comments from the seconders or um, any other councilor commission members at this time? Uh, Jeff Kalin. Yeah, thanks. I just wanted to echo Eric's uh, thanks um, to, to Kiwi and, and uh, uh, Chelsea and the staff for working this for so many months now. We finally worked out some really complicated things in a very clear way. and appreciate that very much. Okay, thank you. Yep, and I, I have to say I appreciated the advisory panel's input on why attendance was rather low uh, during the public comment. So, you know, I don't think it should be an indication that this is not an important issue for the for the council and, and board to, to wrap up today. So, um, without further ado, I think we can um, look for the board. I'll, I'll ask for the board first if there's any objection to the motion. Okay, seeing none, we'll consider the motion approved by consent. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, does the council need to discuss the motion? Nobody on line. Okay. Seeing none, is there any opposition to the motion? Seeing none, motion passes unanimously. Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. Um, so at this point, we will be looking for slightly different uh, board and council motions. Um, and we do believe, believe we have some suggested language for both bodies. Um, Eric Reed, I see you have your hand up again. Yes, ma'am, thank you. For the board, I move to approve addendum 35 to the Summer Flounder Scup and Black Sea Bass Fishery Management Plan. The effective date of any FMP modifications would be consistent with the effective date published in the final rule in the Federal Register or November 1st, 2025, whichever is sooner. I'd like that to be a typo and it say September 2024 instead, but I know I can't do that. So <laughs> that's my motion. Okay, so there's a second to the motion, Joe Semino. And uh, for clarity, the, the November 1st date is selected because that's the beginning of the small mesh exemption program um, next year. Yeah, I would assume that is correct. Hopefully it will be sooner. Uh, you know, uh, obviously this year in 2024, we start on November 1st as well, but uh, I know everybody's been working pretty hard on this and, and maybe we'll get this thing for some portion of this season, but uh, yeah, everybody's worked really hard on this. So it, it is what it is. So thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, and even though the council motion is a little bit different, we'll look to um, get that uh, up as well since they effectively do the, the same thing. All right, we have the council has a motion on the board, Joe Semino. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move to submit the summer flounder commercial mesh size exemption framework with preferred alternatives <clears throat> as identified today to the National Marine Fisheries Service. Okay. We have a motion by Joe Semino and seconded by Jim Gilmore. Yeah, I think the, the council's uh, uh, opportunity to go first this time, so please proceed. Thank you, Madam Chair. Does council have any further discussion on the motion? Seeing the discussion, is there any opposition to the motion? Seeing none, the motion uh, with one abstention. Yep, 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 Mike Garfo. All right, Madam Chair. Okay, um, is there a need for any caucusing discussion from the board? Seeing none, is there any objection to the motion? Any abstentions? <laughs> one abstention from Noah Fisheries. Motion carries by uh, consent with one abstention. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, well, that brings us to the end of our agenda today. Uh, safe travels to everyone. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn? Right. All right. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your afternoon.